Right, so in this video, all we're going to do is look at uh, addition of and subtraction, I guess would be a good idea. Addition and subtraction of fractions that are a little bit complicated, more complicated than the ones we've dealt with before. So I'm going to start with writing out just a simple problem that should give us enough to think about for this tutorial. So 29 over 24. And I'm going to, well, I could add, let's just subtract though and see what that does. Um, 61 divided by, let's say, 9. Okay. Now, having set out a problem very quickly like that, I then want to look at it and see what I'm dealing with here. So I've got two top heavy fractions, uh, improper fractions. No problem with that. But I do want to just think about. Well, where do they lie on the number line and what sort of answer am I going to get? So before I tackle a problem like this, I want to do a bit of estimation. So if over here, let's just write estimate um, 29 over 24. Well, that's going to give me, I can see, that's going to go in one times with, um, let's call it one point. 1.3 so let's go for 1.3 so something in the region of 1.3 it's certainly less than one and a half and I just very quickly want to estimate 61 divided by 9 and so 5 times 9 is going to give me 45 6 times 9 is 54 so it's going to be 6 times something and it looks like roughly 6.8 so I'm going to say it's 6.8. I don't want to spend too long on my estimation, but I do want it reasonably accurate. So now what we've got to do is subtract um, 1.3, subtract 6.8, and that's going to equal negative 5.5. So 5.5, negative 5.5. Now what I've got there then is something that I'm going to compare my answer to. Negative five and a half is roughly what I should get. So that if something goes wrong here, I'll be able to see that I've made a mistake and try and correct it. Okay, going back to the problem then and dealing with it in uh, an exact way. What I want to do is find the lowest common denominator here, which is going to give me my uh, allow me to join these together okay so what I'll uh, find the difference in this case so what I'm going to do is think about common multiples of 24 and 9 I want to find the lowest common multiple I'll write it out in full here and what, I, what I'd usually write though is LCM for short I want to find the lowest common multiple of 24 and 9. So if I write, let's just do the 9 first actually, so that's going to be easier to do. If I write them all out, then I should find one um, that's common to both of them, and then that's going to be my uh, lowest common denominator. Okay, let's give it a go. So 9 times table, very straightforward. 9, 18, 27. 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, and we've got now 81, the square. I don't know whether we need to go higher than that. If we did, there's plenty of room. That would be fine, but I'm just going to stop there to see what I get with this one. Okay, so 24 times 2 now, 48. And then I get 72. So I stop there because I found my lowest common multiple, these two here. Now, um, that really is probably the method that you would use nearly all the time. Because as long as you know your times table and you can chunk up numbers in this way, it's unlikely you're going to make a mistake. And it's a pretty quick method. But in a separate video, we'll look at other methods of finding the lowest common multiple. And very quickly, I think it's worth just thinking about that. So 24 breaks down into prime factors. 2, 2, 2, 
2 and 3. Okay, now you might want to divide to find that, so you, you might sort of say 24. This is perfectly good method, same sort of methods, 2 into 24, 12, 2 into 12, 6, 2 into 6, 3. Um, this is just the factor tree method. But either way, you're going to find out that you've got these common factors. And so the common factors of 24 are... Um, let me write 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And of 9, of course, it's 3 times 3. No need for a um, factor tree to work that out. Now, to find the lowest common multiple, you can list them out like this, but sometimes a quicker method is to do this. We're going to rewrite the um, prime factorization of these two numbers as 24 equals 2 cubed times 3 and 9 equals 3 squared. And I've just written the one above the other because what we want to do is we want to circle the highest of each of these numbers whether they're on their own or squared or cubed or higher than that all we do to find the lowest common multiple, it's a really good method, is we circle the one that's the highest. So in this case, we haven't got um, a 2 here, so we just circle this one, 2 cubed, and 3 squared, giving us an LCM of 2 cubed times 3 squared equals, well, 2 cubed is 8, 3 squared is 9, so we've got 8 times 9 equals 72. So, um, as I say, if you're a bit puzzled what I did there, it's just an alternative method for finding the lowest common multiple. Um, and it's something that can be quicker if you practice it and if you understand the method really well. Um, something that you might want to use. But in most cases, just listing it out like I've done here, um, is the best, best method. Okay, so we've got now our lowest common multiple, in other words, our lowest common denominator, and so we can join these two together. So we can say everything is now um, divided by 72. So we've got, uh, that, we've got our fraction, the bottom half of our fraction, and now we need to work on the top half. So, what did we do to get 72? Well, if you multiply 24 by 3, you get 72. So, we are going to multi multiply the top by, so, um, by 3 as well. So, we've got 3 times 29 as our first part of that expression. And the second part, we've got 9. How many 9s in 72? Uh, 8. So we're going to multiply 61 by 8, so we've got 8 times 61. Okay, so 29 um, over 24 subtract 61 over 9 equals 3 times 29 subtract 8 times 61 over 72. And now we simply do the uh, work this out. So we've got 3 times 29, well 3 times 29 is 3 times 30, which is 90, subtract 3, so we're, we're going to, we could, we could do that in full, so we're going to write 90, rewrite that as 90, subtract 3, okay, so that's done that bit there, 8 times 61, I think I'd want to um, calculate this to one side rather than doing that in my head, um, we could do it a number of different ways, but always with an 8, I'm tempted just to double and double again. So in other words, we've got 8, um, sorry, 2 times 61 is 122. So 4 times 61 is going to be 244. And 8 times 61 is 488. So, no need for brackets here, I can just subtract 488, all divided by 
72. Okay, so now we've got 90 subtract 3 is 87. Whoops, 87. Subtract 488 and divide everything by 72. Now, uh, if we remember from an earlier video, when we've got something like that, it can tend to worry us. This is a complicated looking thing. All we need to do, in fact, is just change the numbers. So if, we're, if we've got a subtract here, then what we're going to do is increase this, okay, so that we've got a nice friendly number here. So um, you might use another method, but this, this should work quite nicely. So if we've got subtract 500, what have we done? Increase that by 12. And if we increase this side of a subtraction by 12, we have to increase this side of the subtraction by 12 as well. So that's 99. Okay? So we've got 99 subtract 500. Well, um, if we think of it as 500 if we think of it as a difference, if we think of it as 500 subtract 99, then um, it's much easier, I think, than trying to think of it in terms of the number line. 500 subtract 99 is obviously 401. And so what we're going to do is make sure we've remembered, though, that this is going to be a negative. So 500 subtract 99 is 401, then 99 subtract 500 is going to be minus 401. So let's put our denominator in, Oops, 72, and our final result is going to be 401, but in the negative over 72. Okay, now we've finished. Um, but one final thing that we could think about doing is turning this rather awkward looking um, fraction into either something simpler or into a mixed fraction. Now we don't need to do this. Uh, we've got the right answer, hopefully. Um, we should have the right answer, but if we do divide it to create a mixed fraction, what it will do is it will get us closer to our estimate that we had here. And that will make us feel more confident that we have actually got the right answer. So I'm going to go to the effort of turning it into a mixed fraction. But before that, does it simplify? Well, to answer the question, does it simplify? Let's just write that down. Um, what I have to do is, or what's useful to do anyway, uh, is think about divisibility. And you'll find on the internet and all over the place all sorts of tricks for finding, um, for checking divisibility. Will this divide up? Will this divide up? Um, is there a common divisor so that we can, um, or common factor we could say, so that we can uh, make this simpler? Well, if I look at it um, in terms of the twos, two times table, that yes, this will divide by two, but because that's an odd number, that won't. Uh, threes, we can do a trick using digit sum where we add up all the digits and if they come to nine or three, then we know it's divisible by three, but this isn't um, adding up to nine, so it, it ends up at five. This one does, so this is divisible by three, but this one isn't. Uh, if I look at the fives, then there's no... Um, no division by five. We've already worked out that an odd number can't be divisible by four. So in fact, a, a quick look using our divisibility checks. Seven is the difficult one, but it doesn't look to me like it divides by seven. This one certainly doesn't. So um, we can be sure that this is as simple as it gets. So we could leave it like this. But what, what I'm actually going to do now is satisfied with my answer. I'm just going to check that I've got what I expected to get when I originally estimated. So I start with 72 and we can call this negative 72 
and I'm going to divide into 401. And I'm going to use a partial quotients method here because really uh, there's no need to go into um, long division because we're going to be chunking anyway. Let's have a think about this then. So 5 times 72, well I know that 5 times 72 5 times 72 is 10 times 72, 720, so it would be 360. So I can um, simply put 360 down here times 5. I know it's not 6 times 72 because if I added 72 to, to that, that would give, give us, that would, that would take us above 401. So now I've got 401 subtract 360 gives me 41. So what I can say is that I've got 5 on the top here uh, with a remainder of 41. That means that 401 or negative 401 is going to be um, negative 5 and 41 is my remainder. So 41 divided by 72. So I don't really like that. I prefer that as, a, a, as an exact number. But what I've managed to do by turning it into a mixed fraction, a mixed number, uh, a, a number and a fraction, is I've been able to check against my original estimate and confirm that um, it is very close to negative five and a half. So this should be correct. Okay. Right, now just to finish this video, I'm going to say something in a minute about um, the lowest common multiple LCM method that we used. But just to mention something that we haven't talked about so far, which is fractions, fractions, and ratios. Now sometimes a fraction will be given in ratio form, so it's important that we understand the uh, connection between fractions and ratios. So here we've got a whole, whatever that number is, let's call it 1, and it's been divided in a 1 to 1 ratio, in other words equal proportions. So that means it's been divided in half, so we've got a half and a half, and one thing we might notice just from this very, very simple division is that if we've got 1 to 1, if we add those ones, we've got 2. And so that gives us our 2 that we're dividing by when we express it as a half. So we've got 1 divided by 2, 1 divided by 2. So 2 is the 1 at the 1. OK, so now that means that when we've got 3 to 2 ratio and we can... Uh, add these together, we're going to be dividing this into fifths. So we make a mark there and a mark there and a mark there. So in other words, what we've got here, if that's a half, then this has got to be two fifths. So three to two gives us fifths. Let's just delete that uh, little mark there so that it's clear. Let's delete that as well. Okay. And so we express that as three-fifths plus two-fifths. So that's uh, to think about fractions and ratios and their relationship. But now let's move into the problem suggested by this second arrangement of rods. Um, so we've got two-fifths here and we've got half here. So now we've got a problem. We're going to try and combine them. OK, we're going to join them together. So in other words, we're going to add one half and two fifths. And I'm setting up this very, very simple little problem so that we can think about what's actually involved when we're finding the lowest common denominator. Now, the method that we used was called lowest common multiple or LCM. And that might be slightly confusing. What we did, if you remember, is we took um, the two denominators, so 2 and 5 in this case, okay, 
and then we simply multiply those up. So this is why we called it lowest common multiple. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And here 5, 10. And then we circled this one and we said, well, there we are. We've got our lowest common denominator. Um, but the term multiple is what might confuse us here. And let's just think about a little bit more carefully what we're actually doing. What we're actually doing, is, in, instead of um, finding the lowest common multiple, we should say perhaps it's the lowest common divisor. Um, because it's below the uh, fraction bar here, it's a, it's a division. And so what we're, we're really doing, it would be laborious to write it out, um, when we're listing out the numbers like this, is we're not finding um, whole numbers, integers. We're, in fact, finding the common divider, divisor between a half and a fifth. In other words, what we should really write, I suppose, um, although it would be tedious, would be one half, a quarter, a sixth, an eighth, and then we get to the tenth, and here one fifth, and then our tenth. So I just wanted to um, clarify that although we're using the terminology lowest common multiple, what we're actually doing, what we need to understand, is we're finding a divisor. So in other words, we're working on multiples of fractions. All right, let's now go back to this problem then, a half plus two fifths. So we've got our half here and our two fifths. But in fact, let's just write them now in their, um, in their new form. So we've now got, okay, five tenths, one, two, three, four, five, and four fifths. So we're adding five tenths, sorry, not four fifths, four tenths. Let's just correct the mistake, okay. Four tenths. So that gives us nine tenths here. And you can see these tenths are represented by these white blocks. Um, but the main point of going through this wasn't to get the answer here, but to understand, you know, what we're actually doing. We're, when we're finding uh, a common denominator, and multiplying that denominator until we find the number that we need to use as the divisor, we're actually finding the lowest common divisor. And I think it's very important to make that point. Okay, I hope that's helpful.